Welcome back to the Golden Lab. I almost said Golden Tea Lab. I'm going to do that four to five times. It hasn't happened yet. Times. Well, it, I think the first time we recorded an episode, I didn't, I mess up like the first, like the very first sentence, which is very us and very me. Um, yeah. That's fine. I don't, I don't know. It's, I'll pretend like you didn't. The more important piece is we made it to episode three. We made it to episode Kevin three. Kevin Lindsay, Adam Kramer. <laughs> and, and I want to say... To everyone out there saying there's no way these guys are going to be able to record this week, like, well, hopefully this actually uploads and our internet works and all those different things. Like, maybe I shouldn't, you know, celebrate this before it's actually done. But we are recording. We're in Las Vegas. Um, we are at our amusement trade show. Uh, we have behaved. Actually, we were talking about before we came on that we feel shockingly good for a Thursday in Vegas. So, first shockingly. and foremost, how, how are they? How Give me your Vegas vibe here, heading into the the last day of our trade show. You know, it, it, the vibe is really good. Uh, the weather is beautiful. It is crappy back in Chicago, and I believe sucks. there's snow coming. Uh, so that being in Vegas, us. 75 degrees. Um, you know, I hate the uh, I hate Vegas in the summer when we come here for Worlds because it's just it's just so hot. When we get out here for Amusement Expo International. Um, you know, even when you're in dress pants and, you know, a nice polo, the weather, the 70s is like a perfect kind of fit. And, and like you said, we've been pretty tame. Um, I think my first night here, I was in bed by nine o'clock, which I don't think most people will believe because I didn't believe it at first. Um, but it for a trade show for us that, that you know, these weeks are just long. There's yeah. a lot of setup uh, and, and things to do beforehand. Uh, and once you get through those various little struggles, like something breaks, something doesn't work, something's incorrectly typed on a flyer that you responsibly ordered way in advance. Um, you know, once you get past those and the show actually starts, um, yesterday was, I would say, Adam, I mean, in my six years of going to trade shows, probably the best year, uh, the best start to a trade show uh, in a really, really long time. Oh, yeah. Like, um, our, our industry show, I mean, this is 35 years of golden tea, right? And our industry show, I, I've done this now for... 16 15 years um this was definitely the the busiest i've seen it in the past decade there were more exhibitors this year um a lot of it's evolved too because it's not just golden tea or like you know big buck hunter or street games um there was some vr which has always been intriguing to me there is some obviously the fec david buster's pride which I, i'm we're fascinated by just because it's like big giant monstrosities there's a game this is a funny aside there's a game next to our booth Oh God! What is the name of it? I'm not goats and something, and it's, oh, a, it's yes. a giant FEC product, right? It's I mean it's it's 15 feet tall, and it's like a rope pulling Go game. So you're pulling goats and ropes, goats, goats and, and ropes, ropes, right? And um, it's actually exhausting to do. Uh, and but it, it's we've been listening to goats now for a couple of days, so I I think yeah. I've got my goat quota for the year. Um, is it more exhausting think, than the football game that you were playing uh, yeah, yeah, uh, next a, to our booth? I, my shoulder is indeed sore today um, from shooting uh, baskets and throwing footballs. Uh, no, I, but that is that it's fun to walk around and get some ideas. Um, and then it's fun to really talk to people. Like we've got our four golden tees in the back of our booth. Uh, we joked last week, like, would they arrive in one piece? And Yeah, the, the classic games. The classic they're games. And they're still running. Nothing's stirred yeah. on fire. Nothing's broken. <laughs> Have you played Old Fingers 89 crossed. out there? Like, have you played I, the I first not. edition? Oh my I, God. I will tell you, as somebody who loves Golden Tea, like, I, you know, we talked with Jim Z about it too. Like, 89, it was like you paid per stroke. You didn't pay for 18 holes at first. Um, the trackball, the way we used the trackball in that game was still in its infancy. So it's it's pretty hard. Uh, a lot harder than, than the newer games where we're probably a bit more forgiving when it comes to the putting and, and chipping and things like that. It, it is hard. No, I noticed that too. And then the other thing, every shot, the game loads like every texture individually, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's an old game, um, but it's fun to see. And it's fun to see people's uh, responses uh, of the booths, like of the old games and, you know, coupled with our new stuff. So it, I, it's, I have it, to it's say a very good show. I I have had a handful of people ask me, "Are you guys selling those games?" Oh yeah, it, like it, it's it's funny because they see it in your booth. They're like, Are "You guys selling those again?" They're like, "No, no, no, no. It's Golden Tea's 35th anniversary. We're just we're here just, to just celebrate this, it. This doesn't catch on fire, ma'am." Um, no, yeah. it's it's it has been a really good show. Good good energy, great vibe. Um, 
you know what the positive talk about uh, in, in the industry has been, Adam? It's our one of our favorite topics to talk about is the Golden TPG Tour kits for, for old cabinets. Well, it has been very positive. It's it's I think it's helpful with a product like this to put it out like we have it, it displayed out where it's like literally every like bit of bit pieces. of piece. Um, arcade collection has also, I'll tell you, it's funny, like you've got, you're trying all, all these different messages. We've got our, you know, our new facts, which is score it, which we will talk about more, I think on this pod when we're not rushing and going to be late for a trade show. That um, was really good save by the way. Oh, what? Uh, oh, that I said you, facts. I, <laughs> you, you calling it facts? It's like, it's this... like glory, glory play, man. It, it will be forever yeah. glory play and talking about online playing golden tea. Uh, but Arcade Collection, which is coming online here in the next couple of months with Silver Strike, a lot of conversations about that, a lot of interest in that. Um, so, no, I, I think there's so many takeaways. We'll, and we'll do a full debrief, I think, next week. But in general, um, it's very encouraging just to see the industry healthy, to see people excited about our products, to be, see people excited about other products. This is funny, too, by the way, because um, Nightclub and Bar is going on at the same time as this. Nightclub and bar used to be a wild show. A, a when I first started coming to this, while nightclub and bar, we should do a full nightclub and bar recap episode. It it got so out of control that they like really tamed it down. They changed and the I'm, name I'm, of the show <laughs> to bar yes, and restaurant. Exactly. That's, bar how, and restaurant. that's how well that's how much you wanted to needed, change it up. Yeah, it needed a rebrand. Uh, by the end of that show, fine. One story, you know, witchy hours, like the last hour. They're just serving booze to everybody in this show. And by the end of it, they'd come over and play whatever game we had there. People would put their, you know, their beers or their whatever the goddamn things they're drinking on top of like our game. And I can't tell you how many spilled inside of our cabinets. Yeah. It was sweaty. It was, it was, it was weird. So that's been tamed down. But I did run into there's a new craft beer bar uh, near me that I, I that we have ventured to. Uh, it's a great place, really good people. And I'm on the escalator and there, lo and behold, like of all the places in Las Vegas, there is the owner of it is a really good guy who is going to get a golden tea actually like going the other direction on the escalator. Like Vegas for as big as crazy as it is, it is a very small world. You know, and, and we actually, so John Noble, who, for those of you who don't know, is our VP of mobile development and also MIS, like our, our IT, our actual tech department. And him and I ran off uh, down there really quick yesterday just to check out like that last hour or so of the show. I will tell you what, though, if you are tired of trade show food uh, next year, you need to get down there because they have a massive. I mean, it's it's probably 30 booths wide of a section where people are just serving all kinds of really delicious food. Try out these sauces. Somebody gave me a bottle of Louisiana cocktail sauce um, that I had Ooh. with some shrimp, uh, although I was. Ran into a friend of the program, Dean Lyakakos, old school Golden Sea yes. player. Extremely weird. Talking to some people in the Heineken Dos Equis booth and run into him of all people. Um, so talk to him for a little bit. But but that show is definitely more tame. Um, but they are still serving booze, let me tell you. Um, not, that, not that John and I drank uh, a ton of it, but they were giving out samples left and right because they were just ready. It's just like us. If we were in that industry, you don't want to bring as much home it's closing as time. you brought Everything to the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, wait, I'm glad you brought up Dean, uh, who I get to hang out with for a few minutes yesterday too. And it's kind of a cool segue, I guess, to the other piece of what we're doing out here, which is golden tea being inducted to the AMOA in our industry hall of fame. They did a ceremony yesterday, Larry Hodgson and Jim Zelinsky, who we are going to talk to at some point. We're not just saying we're going to talk to, uh, accepted the award, very rightfully so. Um, I thought it was really cool. Uh, now, they had to stand up there on the stage for about an hour because we were first to go. So uh, that's fine, but it is what it is. But uh, I thought the introduction that they gave, the description of the game, uh, the reception was cool. And again, for us, we're talking about Hall of Fames, uh, our own Hall of Fame, and the nostalgia pieces of this, I, I think it was just a tremendous honor uh, fun to spend time with those guys out here. Fun to watch them spend time together because they don't do it as much these days. Everybody's busy. Everybody has stuff going on. So I thought that was just a, obviously a really cool moment. Yeah, it was hard to not, you know, ignore your own pain uh, and suffering of standing up for probably like the ninth or tenth hour of the day because we at least had chairs that we could slide into if one opened up uh, versus the, those guys standing for quite some time. But like you said, very... Um, 
you know, very well deserving of this game, of this brand. Um, you know, on the 35th uh, or the year of our 35th anniversary, too, is very special. Um, you know, that committee, when we talked to them and said, hey, uh, you know, it's Golden Tee's 35th anniversary, they said, yes, this is absolutely uh, welcome and overdue, and they're happy to welcome us in. Um, and who better than, than Jim and Larry to accept that? Yeah, it was neat. It's a fun moment. Got the, again, um, you know, and it's it's funny, you know, even Larry, like talking about different ideas with the game still and I, things that we'd like to fix or make better or things we'd like to add. Like the wheels are always turning with those guys, which is, it's 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 a wonderful thing, but a great honor, too. It was fun to be a part of that. Um, OK, now we are going to get we are going to keep this shorter today. Uh, we have to, otherwise we're going to be late to this show and it's already very busy. Um, what we are going to end this show with, because there's a certain basketball tournament. In fact, as we record this, I think it's starting like right now. Right, right? now. I'm ill prepared for it, but I, I am prepared enough. And obviously Vegas is very, uh, it's it's the hub, right, of March Madness. It is, it is where you go. It is what you do. And today will be absolutely insane. So what we are going to do shortly is rank our favorite golden tea courses of all time, one through 16, um, which was actually a lot harder to do than I thought it was going to be. I don't know how you yes. feel. That. It, no, uh, it, it was. It, you have those but, courses in your head. You're like, these are top five. We talk about all the time, but then when you actually write it down on paper, it is, is not easy. But before we do that, let's talk first red sands. Um, <laughs> why are you smiling? I know. I just you know. Do. I'm ready to talk about a couple of really fun topics. Uh, no, all right. So Red Sands is out. It's it's funny. It's always funny seeing the responses for courses because, and and, and we said on the pod, it's very different, right? It's very very different. It's very flat. Um, I love this course. I will stand by this course. I think it. I, I'm I'm actually very excited to see it in match play at Worlds. Uh, but your thoughts? Red Sands is out. Go try it if you haven't already. Actually, many many people are trying it, seeing the data. So you should go do the same if you haven't yet. Well, honestly, the response has been so overwhelmingly positive that we're actually using that as the only qualifying course in Worlds uh, this year. Five red That's, sands. Wow. That is that is how great. No, it. you know, um, I will openly take the joking in the Jags for because, you know, like I said in, in a previous podcast, you know, uh, you and Jim and the development team came to me and said, Kevin, you've got these old course files. You, you know, you know these old courses. What are you thinking? Um, to me, I, I will stand by, you know, you know, suggest that to you guys because it is – Although it's been called Art DeVry, I'm really glad that I appreciate him as a person, but he called it a, a PGA Tour course with boulders, um, which was actually pretty damn funny when we first uh, saw that. So kudos to him. But um, to me, I like the fact that it's an open course because I am comparing it to 1997, playing it on a Golden Sea 3D golf cabinet um, where it was stock stock. There was no clubs and balls, um, you know, that you could change like you do now. Um, yeah. To me, I actually don't mind the the scoreability or like the openness to it. Although sometimes, just like some of our other favorite courses, you get a setup where it's going to set up for a 24, and with the right ball and club combination, you might get a 28. Um, but again, everybody has their opinion. Uh, we yeah. have our opinion. The players, you know, the the loudest players, of the bunch are Golden T fan players. Again, people that we know and. Uh, sort of, I was going to, I almost said love and respect, but it depends on the day, I guess, and, and their tone, but no, um, but it, it is what it is. Like it, it's another old school course. And that's part of the, the charm of it is that you have Pine Creek and you have Coral, uh, Ridge, the other two 1997 courses we've remastered in previous years. Those are just chock full of, of, um, obstacles and trees and water and all that. This is a bit more open and it is what it is. I think it's I think it's fun and and I I again, it's funny because this course this course is very old, and I think it's on us. Our our assignment with this has been to recreate it exactly as it was, and I I, I like that because it speaks to just how the game has developed over the years somewhat naturally. It's like it's like a sport in baseball or football. Uh, technology gets better. Things you do that are well received or not well received. And you grow, but I like it because it is different. I mean, this is this is the part for me that if you were to build a course that like looked and filled by whatever popular course we're going to mention here in a momentarily, um, I, I like that it's taken chances and it is a part of history too. So I have played it some, obviously, and I'm looking forward to playing it here when we get home as well. Uh, actually, you know what? Screw it. 
you and I will play it today uh, in the booth when things start to wind down. Sounds like a good uh, usage of our time. Uh, we'll give Thursday demos afternoon and trade shows. Yeah, yeah, th- yeah, exactly. So, so that is out. Um, anything else before we get to our list? We are actually sort of ish on schedule time. Uh, no, you know, we we can get to March Madness. I had a little note here. I will I won't get into it too much, but. The fun thing about there being multiple Golden Tee podcasts is there's a lot of different conversations about a lot of different topics. Um, so my good friend, truly good friend, uh, and somebody who really brought me in to this game to another level, Brian Bernhardt, had a couple of choice words, respectable choice words about our production setup at Wisconsin. Um, because IT is only an hour and a half from the, uh, the Sussex, Wisconsin mm-hmm. location. But, you know, as we had mentioned, we had a little bit of an issue where the stream PC that we have... It's probably like five inches on every side of a, a carrying case, a very secure case that goes with the power vents truck. Um, again, after five years of using this computer, some stuff got loose. Our capture card got broken, uh, hard drive, uh, the pins literally snapped off. So we kind of shot from the hip, literally brought my desktop from the office um, and hooked up the capture card that you and I use when we're doing videos and streaming from the office. So it's, it's, I would say basic. It's not in a bad way, but it's basic in the sense that you're running USB devices and, you know, 25 length uh, foot length of HDMI. But um, my friend Brian must not realize that, unfortunately, as as much money as we we love to spend uh, on tournaments and stuff. Again, another joke. We don't spend a lot, but people think we do. Uh, We don't have fifteen hundred dollar capture cards just sitting in the in the back of our warehouses to go grab in the instance that one of them breaks. Um, So, you know. We had a we had a good stream. It highlighted Sean Gervais winning his first tournament in many years, which is the important part. Um, you know, we're actually our Mountain Dew shot friend. I think that's a new trend we need to start yeah, at tournaments. Is just I like that the buying of Mountain Dew shots in honor of Sean Gervais' first win in a while. But uh, I just I right. like the the podcast responses to each other. I to be clear, I'm staying out of this one. I've got enough. I've got enough. <laughs> I've got <laughs> enough. Okay. Uh, but I like it. If this can become a regular thing where it's uh, pods responding to each other. And, and no, it's, it is it, doing that stuff is really hard, by the way. Uh, it gives me, uh, you guys put something out on social yesterday as we're in Vegas and trying to get through, oh. you know, 99 days to a world. I'm sitting this, like getting up, I can't ever sleep out here. And I'm like, holy shit, we got to get. And so um, it, it more than anything, you're, as you're talking, I'm thinking like, my God, it's, it's coming. It's coming quickly. So we've got to we've got to get going. But no, it's it's all good. It's all I I I, I again go. There's a lot of golden teapot. Well, there's not a lot, but there's more than one there's golden a handful. podcast out there. Go check them out. No, it's funny. I almost called this segment uh, Brian B's bullshit, but I thought that was too strong for people that don't understand the dynamic Brian and I have. So when we eventually have Brian on the podcast, we'll have a really, I, I'm looking forward to that day. We do that episode because that will be a fun spirited, I, uh, you know, conversation. I like that. You said you almost called it that, but then proceeded to basically call it that like that's, yeah, that's good. Just, looking out. Um, all right. Let's rank some golden tea courses. This is hard. Yes. Okay. So I want to put in some caveats because these rankings are, uh, we just talked about red sands and how people view red sands. I the the criteria for how I ranked my courses was I think like general enjoyment and and here's my here's my other disclaimer like I am not playing as much golden tea as I used to obviously um, and I used to play you're a bit busy I, but but before I had the job is is when I started and really that's when my love for golden tea kind of started blossom <laughs> and I, I think actually you are in a very similar position different eras, different things. But so for me, a lot of like my fondest memories are tied to that. So for my rankings, it was really like, it wasn't like what I think is like the best. It was like what courses have kind of hit me in a certain way that I think about them strongly. Mix of new, mix of old, but I think I'm heavier on the older courses because that was where it all began. So that was just an important disclaimer I wanted to put out there. Um, And... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. I, I'm curious how similar are we? We have not shared these lists with one another, right? Like we are, we're coming into this somewhat blind. Um, any disclaimers you want to put out there before people say your list is bullshit? Uh, I will not uh, say. Well, that, I mean, they're but, they're going to say yeah. it anyways, no matter what we have. Um, I mean, I almost mm-hmm. 
had Red Sands as my top 16 not every there single iteration. I went back Double and down. forth between 97 and 2024. But no, uh, mine is the same. Again, as somebody who's played this game somehow shockingly for 27 years, which is crazy to say, um, I've seen a lot of courses. And the the thing that's fun, too, is I have a mixture of old school and, and, and you know, current generation and new. But uh, for me, when I was thinking of these, it's, you know, what were the courses I had the most fun playing? Um, you know, ones that had very specific memorable holes that when we're creating Freaky Fridays or event courses, I like to put in because I know I'm not the only one that loves it. And obviously we have gameplay data reports we see. Um, I haven't compared it to our list, but that would be fun to see how these rank compared to these courses being played. Um, and and yes, no matter what our like what we have, somebody will disagree with one or all 16 of our, our all picks. 16. That's fine. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to each go five at a time, and then we'll go to number one. Um, in an effort to move this along, because well, you and I could like talk uh, for 20 minutes on each course. Uh, that would not be good content. Um, so we'll try to move this along. Uh, but I'll start. I'll go with my first five. Uh, number 16, Indigo Mound, 2007. I've got Missouri Hills. I want to talk about that one um, from this year. Pine hmm. Coast... 2017 summit lakes 2008 and Catedrice beach 2019 and i'm also realizing as i'm reading this i did look at the dates um i undoubtedly screwed up a date and if i screwed up a date uh you could correct me or someone else could correct me um but so here, just a quick note on this um missouri hills uh my kids are really starting to get into golden tea now and with the colors and everything else it missouri hills it seems to be what we play um with my kids at home so it's kind of like I talk about the old and new that course. I, and I really like the course, by the way, the course I just, but I'm playing that a lot somehow in these courses. Like what I do play, it seems to be the one that my like four year old always wants to end up on. So naturally this is like a father son moment. Uh, Missouri Hills. I will, I will point out would be the one that's kind of intriguing to me. And, and I think it's a really fun course too, on top of that. So that would be my first five. All right. For me, uh, there's actually, I won't spoil some of the later lists, but I, I think a pretty different list for me. Um, for 16, I have Antelope Pass from 2016. Oh, that's uh, a good I, one. One of the most fun drivable par fives in history. I mean, it speaks for itself. Um, Sparkling Waters comes in at number 15 from GT 2015. It's just a beautiful course with a really fun 18th hole. Pine Creek from 1997, just a classic tree course. Um, you know, and, and then Ruby Rock 2017 is uh, number 13. Again, it's it's just it's Ruby Rock. It, there, there's not too much you need to Rock. say about that. It should be a T-shirt. And then it's Ruby Rock. <laughs> and then number 12 for me is Castleshire from 2002, uh, or oh, the yeah. remastered version. It's a brutal course, but it's beautiful, and it's got a really fun 17th that can either make or literally break a beautiful game that you have going. Okay, very very good. Um, all right, now we go 11 through 7. Um, my 11 is Sunnywood, which is 2009. My 10 is Coconut Beach, 2020, 2012. Hidden Temple, uh, 2000. I did to type it here, 2021. I had 2001. See what I mean? I should have probably looked at this before I started talking. Uh, at least Monument you caught Valley. it, though. I did. I did. Uh, I'm Ron Burgundy. Uh, Monument Valley, 2009. And Nordland, um, Nordland more recently um, of last year. So I would say that Sunnywood, if I'm looking at my list again, I, maybe I underrated Sunnywood a little bit. I I don't know. There's something about that course. The train, the setup, uh, 18 was great. I love that 18th hole. Uh, uh, what was it? 17, the par three. I can't remember 17 or 16. The par three with that little up front ledge was always when I was trying to learn this game. A brutal shot where you're hitting a two or three iron in. You're trying to catch. That's, I think that's one of the hardest holes in golden history. So um, I like them all. But Sunnywood to me is one that maybe if I was going to redo this, I would move up a little bit. Well, and you also didn't forgot to mention the fact that it's literally a giant roller coaster across the entire course. I mean, that is. It's awesome. You it's can't just beat like, that. You can't beat it. It's just very different than some of the other stuff that we've done. All right, for me, this is where we start to blend in, at least with this pick. I have Summit Lakes at number 11. Um, just throwing it out there for our friends on the dev team, which you happen to lead, water turning into ice on snow courses we, is we, kind of fun. Talked to, we've talked um, about it. I agree. 
No, I had to bring it up because I knew you. you there, I mean, that course is fun, but when you can potentially drive holes by using the ice, it makes for really good YouTube content, by the way. It, uh, yes, we are all about the YouTube. All right, number 10, I have the Great Wall from 2010, one of the very uh, hard par fives of hole 15, uh, before tees and even after tees. Um, and number nine, everyone's favorite course this week, Red Sands from 1997. Uh, for me, that's more of a personal thing because it was one of the first courses that I played and truly remembered as a kid. Um, Palm Springs oh, from like 2007. Um, you know, we talked about that course previously when when Adam talked about your uh, your venture into Golden Tee, but really fun 17th and 18th hole. Uh, and the number seven is Whispering Valley from the OG Golden Tee Live. Yeah, um, yeah gorgeous was... and scorable. There's there's not more that you really need to say about that course either. Very nice. Uh, Whispering Valley is a good one to add too. I could absolutely include that list um all right six through two uh number six rocky hollow uh number five desert valley number four woodward uh woodland farms number three rustic bridge number two rattlesnake bridge now okay i would say this is where my list solidifies i feel i'm limping in up until this point for me this is where the list gets good um Desert Valley hole six, uh, the par three is one of the coolest holes we have. And watching people, players, really good players, like chipping in with woods or irons, I, I think it's just such a Earth. different hole. And it, it was such a, that moment was just so cool. I thought it, it I, I love the, what that was helping us create. Um, and, I, and Rattlesnake Ridge, let's just talk a moment about Rattlesnake Ridge. Now you and I have been at a lot of trade shows together. Um, what my strategy is on Rattlesnake Ridge as a trade show is I'm going to play this course as many times as I can. And the moment I screw it up, and I screw it up every goddamn time, DNF. it's a restart. Um, and I, But I love the course. I mean, it's super scorable. It, it's, it's above my pay grade, I think, in terms of skill. But it's another one of those courses that if you get that perfect setup, you can you can put up a monster score. I just these days like I thirty five under we've seen on that course. It's it's it, it's crazy. It's, yes. So so that one to me that list that this became very very easy for me. And the, the last thing I'll say too, you know, Rustic Bridge is when I started to play that year. I could take that whole year and probably feel pretty strongly about it. I thought that was such a cool experience in the mall. It still is a cool experience. That that was like golden tea to me. Like that. It, the the distractions, the noise, the very pixelated now joggers walking through all of that. When you thought, when I thought, hey, they about hold up pretty game. well. All right, they, no, but it was fun. I like they might move cuts, like this, like, but you know, yeah, I it was a whole twelve. I forget the par five, but like there was shortcuts in that. Like I don't know, there's something about that that was very golden tea. So I'm curious you know now. I'm curious with your list, how much crossover we have here. There has to so be it's, some. It's funny. There is some, but. You know, when I'm looking at my list and hearing you talk about yours, um, there's over 110 courses almost at this point, um, just in Golden yeah. Tee live uh, alone, um, not to mention going back all the way to 89. Um, and so when there's some of these courses like Rustic Bridge, I don't have them on my list. It should be there because what you said is true. And it's very fun course and I love it. It's part of what is fun about this list is that, you know, when we do this again, we could do this again in a year after another year of playing golden tea and things like that. And we probably would have a slightly shifted list just because there's so many courses, something, some courses undoubtedly going to get left off of the list and we're going to get yeah. just absolutely destroyed for it on social media. That's what happens. That's what happens. All right. So for me, I have number six is Kings Canyon from golden T four, 2003. It's a challenging oh, nice. course, but fun to master uh, Rancho Cigarro, 1999, uh, the desert course, uh, not as fun as Red Sands, according to the internet, but um, but another fun desert course, old school. Um, number four, Suerte del Sol from Golden T for the original 2000 release. Uh, and this is where we blend together. Not My number three, Rattlesnake Ridge, but I have, um, I'm very specifically calling out the 2002 version um, because hole 12, one of three drivable par fives, uh, as we mentioned, a really scorable course, but 
Um, the original course, you could take a driver and hit it off of the rocks in front of the green and actually bounce it up there and stick the green. And I will give a funny shout out to both Jim Zielinski, uh, co-creator Golden Tea and the senior course designer and, and Tim, one of our artists, because Tim came in, he transitioned from QA to an artist, was rocking it. And when we remastered the course a couple of years ago, he went in there and uh, unbeknownst to Jim changed up the way the rocks looked because he said, hey, like these rocks. They're not, they're not updated to, you know, the standards of Golden T 2018, Golden T Live. It didn't look like it should. And he didn't know that by doing that, he took away the trick shot. Um, so thankfully, we have a lot of, you know, six, eight woods, nine woods, and high tees. But it makes that hole so much more challenging uh, on the new course. So it, it just, again, you and I can talk forever about Golden T, but I, I like to throw in these fun stories because it's stuff that people may not realize. Yeah. Um. Oh, number and one. by the way, uh, yes. number two, I forgot to get to that one. Oh, number two is Rocky Hollow from 2015. Um, I don't need to talk about it. It's There's it's going to be a lot it's of a people that team. will agree with me on that course. It's, uh, it's a great course. That was in my top six as well. Now, I'm assuming we've got it, the num same number one. It, real quick, just because I like, uh, I like doing this stuff in this podcast with you, I'm just going to say... Um, Rocky Hollow is a fun course. It is almost 10 years old, and I think I need to play more of it late, like going into this year just because I haven't played a lot of it lately. I think you should play Rocky Hollow 2. Not 2, the number 2 as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. It's a, there's, yes, there is Rocky not a Hollow, new Rocky, Rocky Hollow, Hollow coming out. Rocky Hollow Black or yes. South or West. Uh, Rocky Hollow is a great course. I, I, it's funny. We're about to go to this trade show, and I'm sizing up what Golden Tee course I'm going to play at some point. Now, Number one, uh, we don't have to bullshit around. If you've known no. us a long time, you probably know this is Bonnie Moore. And it's your number one as well, correct? Oh, the original Absolutely. Bonnie Moore. I do like Bonnie Moore Black quite a bit. Actually, almost made my list. But Bonnie Moore, um, I'm going to get this bullshit out of the way now so you don't get sad. You are still the Damn only it. person to hit all in one on whole 10 of Bonnie Moore, uh, on YouTube at least, which is pretty amazing, to be quite honest. I mean, uh, Wait, and that, can and we just take cool. like, can we take like a 15 yeah. second pause where I could just, we could stop and just have producer Matt put the just, video replay in the podcast. <laughs> oh man, I think all we those should do frames that. where it's chugging along. Yeah, those old YouTubes are great. Um, but... Like Bonnie Moore, when it came out, we were at a time in Golden Tee where Jim and the course team were really kind of tightening up the scoring. And so it became harder to shoot a high score or a low score, excuse me, in Golden Tee to post a really good score. And Bonnie Moore kind of symbolized a next generation of courses. I think it really inspired, uh, I, not even at the time, but when, when things point. started to change, you said, well, what can we do differently? And we looked at the popularity of Bonnie Moore and said, well, let's let's go this route. And now Bonnie Moore is sort of the norm. And so that's it, cool. But but for for me and I think for you, it was uh, it was kind of the same essence of Rattlesnake Ridge. It was so set up hinge in. Um, it was fun. The shots were really fun. Hole two is a great hole because of that drive and. You know, I hit a hole in one on that. My favorite hole in one, also from that course, was a skip like over the fescue that went in. It has so much character, man. Beyond the scoring, it just has a lot of character. No, I 100% I agree. And you really talked about it because I will say, because somebody else will say it if I don't first. 2010, uh, the following year had some pretty damn tough courses. Um, but like you said, getting, you know, five or six years later when Jim and the course team really started to look and we started to change the way, um, you know, we weren't forcing players to play courses where a 26 was like a master score. We were getting yeah. closer to the 28s, the 29s and the 30s. But part of that reasoning, like you said, is even back in those days, Bonnie Moore was still at the top of the charts. And this was before invites. This yes. was when you'd still have to change, uh, almost potentially change the, um, you know, Bonnie Moore to actually be a choosable course. Because back in the day, you had five yes. courses, 
five classic and that was it now we just give you a big old carousel of whatever comes up and you know bonnie moore people were going out of their way to pick it because it is that damn good it is no it's uh whole 18 um i mean youtube you talk about youtube it's that's an interesting moment oh, yes you talked about your shot but jesus i don't know what that was <laughs> but that was very vegas baby. that's very um, vegas it, 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 the the fact that we... i felt like i was being honked at from the 30th floor <laughs> Um, the fact that we got through 35 minutes without like a Las Vegas interruption was actually pretty good. Jesus. Um, no, but like this was, I, I don't remember when YouTube launched. It, it was like, you know, that it was like a, a new world of content um, for me because this is what I looked for. And Bonnie, Hole 10, um, Hole 18, off the, the umbrella Hole in One where you hit it off the umbrella. Like it was cool. Like it was also the time that I think people started to realize like I got this call for many, many years and occasionally still like people are fuck people. Hey, the scores are bullshit. These are bots. And it's like, well, no, like here, here's the guy here. Here's the shot here. Now, when you see it at tournaments, all that stuff is, it goes away, but um, it just brokered in like a really new era of gold. But, but it is a good point. It wasn't immediate. I think it took a couple of years to realize um, what they had uh, always near and dear to our hearts. So body more, is our March Madness bracket champion. I don't think I can say that. I think that's probably going to get us sued. Our, just bleep our, it out. Our bleep, yes. bleep yes. champion. And um, I will say that is probably the one course that we will not get a lot of pushback from the community and the players from because it, there's a lot of people that agree with that. Um, so what do you guys think? Let us know where we are right. I know you let us know where we're yeah. wrong. Um, and that's fine too. Uh, and, and, and honestly, share your own lists on social media. I'd love to see, I'd love to see anybody's list, but I'd really love to see some of our like historically great players put their lists out there because it's going to be different. They want to be tortured because a lot of our great players want hard courses. Where's black Hills on that list? Where are some courses? Yeah. Because I think, uh, depending on what your skill level is, these these players or a certain type of player wants tough because if you put them on a course with somebody else, they like their chances because that course, yep. a Black Hills, by way of example, is or was Sequoia. so difficult. Yes, yeah, Sequoia. Um, it, it's there's a list of those too, and that's like, that would actually be what what we think our hardest courses are. We'll just do rankings, man. Aggregate this shit. That's, that's um, perfect. So okay, anything else? We do have to get the hell out of here. We are. I, slightly I over think, what we thought it would be. Honestly, I think at fun. this point we should just skip the show. The team's got it. Let's just go enjoy Vegas for a day. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks thanks okay. in advance for all your help. Yeah, that sounds even better, actually. There's a lot of distractions out here all of a sudden. Helicopters. I'm standing in front of T-Mobile Arena. Like It's it's weird down there if you've ever been um, to see the Knights or UFC fight. And it's, I'm longing for... Uh, a good UFC fight here in Vegas so at some point soon, which I believe we have one when we're out here for Worlds. Um, and That's I believe, perfect. based off what I read yesterday, that Conor McGregor may be actually fighting in this, who knows, when we are out here for Worlds. So if you wow. qualify right. for Worlds, get your shit booked. Because if Conor McGregor is fighting in Vegas, oh yeah, um, get, you know, I'm just saying, uh, get, get things organized. Wait, I have to ask, have you booked your Las Vegas world championship fight yet? No, no, I, but I'm going to, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm thinking about booking it. Um, all right. We gotta go. We gotta go to the show. Um, not. but we appreciate you guys. Hopefully everybody enjoy It's a fun weekend. It's always a really good weekend, uh, of golden tea too. For people out playing in bars, playing in their homes, taking time off to watch basketball. This is always in terms of gameplay, one of our biggest weekends of the year. Um, it's a fun which one. we appreciate. And uh, we hope you guys enjoy. For Kevin, I'm Adam. We will talk to you guys next week.